Welcome back. Standing in front of a 2019 BMW i3 S, about to do a 70 mile an hour highway range test as we do with all of the electric vehicles. I'm at the Bridgewater, New Jersey, Target, Electrify America station. The vehicle actually just topped off and it's given me the warning that I have 10 minutes to unplug before I get charged idle fees. I don't think this segment of the video will be longer than that, so I'll be safe. Um, BMW introduced the i3 in 2014. It had a 22 kilowatt hour battery and 2016 and a half as a 2017 model, they introduced the new battery larger. It was 33 kilowatt hours. Then two years later in 2019, they introduced the larger battery, which was 42.2 kilowatt hours. This has an EPA range rating of 153 miles per charge. We're gonna get out on the New Jersey Turnpike see how far she goes at a constant 70 miles an hour. We've got great conditions today. It's about 87 degrees, so I will have the air conditioning on the whole time. Just check, check the tires. Actually, they were way off. I had to correct them uh, to the rec manufacturer's recommended PSI, which is staggered in the case of the i3S. The front wheels are supposed to be at a 39 PSI, the rear wheels at 44. The rear tires are wider on the on the i3S. Uh, some of the BMW models have staggered tires. Uh, that's been uh, BMW i3 models. That's been the case since the vehicle was introduced in 2019. So um, trying to think, wind is excellent. We have a four mile an hour crosswind coming from the west, which should be very minimal. Temperature is good. We're at 100%. We're going to hop out onto the turnpike now. I'll check back somewhere probably in the middle to see how we're doing. I'm going to guess that we're going to come in somewhere at around 145 miles. I've owned two BMW i3s. I've owned the original one, the 2014 i3 with range extender. Then I owned a 2018 uh, BMW i3 S, but this one has the bigger battery. So I've, ne I've never owned the one with the 120 amp hour battery with the capacity of 42.2 kilowatt hours. I think we get about 39 usable. So if you do the math and I average close to four miles per kilowatt hour, which is what I expect, we should come up somewhere around 145, maybe as much as 150. I think we're gonna get close to the EPA range rating on this vehicle, but again, as I've mentioned in the past, I've been wrong before and I'll be wrong again. Check back with you when we're about halfway through. All right, checking back in, we're a little past 50%. I'm gonna keep my eyes on the road. Uh, and when we passed 50%, we were at 72.5 miles, which actually works out to 145 miles estimated finishing range, which is what I thought we might finish up at. Now, I, I doubt I'll hit it right on the head like that, but I think we're going to be pretty close. Um, the, the consumption has been bouncing between 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour and 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. It's currently throw, showing uh, 3.6. Um, temperature has gotten hotter than before, as we expected, but we're up to 94 degrees right now. It's super hot. Um, I have the uh, AC set at 70 degrees. Fan speed, um, it's been keeping the cabin pretty cool out with uh, the lowest fan setting, which, you know, the, the, the i3's H, HVAC system works pretty well, uh, and it doesn't have a huge volume of air to, to cool down. So um, I do have it on the low speed, but the air has been on the whole time. You might notice the speedometer showing 72 miles an hour, not 70. And that's because the BMW speedometers always read fast. I always check the speedometers to uh, GPS. And as I expected, uh, this was the same with my I th i3s. At 70 miles an hour, they're about two miles an hour fast. So I have this set at 72, which is actually a perfect 70 miles an hour GPS Ranger rating. So we're heading back up the turnpike now. Um, there's uh, a couple elevation changes. We're heading up a little bit now, then we go down. Turnpike isn't perfect. There are elevation changes, not a lot. It's a 100 or 150 feet maybe. That's why I drive in circles up and down the turnpike to try to offset any uh, elevation gain or loss. 
And we do this same course with all of the cars we test for Inside EVs, so it's a fair side-by-side -side comparison. While it's not the perfect 70 mile an hour range test, it's fair in that we test all the cars exactly the same on the same roads. The only thing we really can't control is the temperature. Sometimes we test them when it's a little cooler out, and that hurts the range a little bit. But, you know, in New Jersey, we get all seasons here. It's not San Diego, where it's perfect 70 degrees every day. Um, okay, let me take a look at some of the efficiency graphs here on the iDrive and see what we're showing. Okay, technology in action. This is eDrive. Okay, so this shows here the last eight miles of driving, eight minutes of driving broken up into one minute segments. Um, okay, now it's telling me it can find a more efficient route, which I don't want. It's telling me to use Eco Pro. I'm driving in um, normal driving mode, which I do with all of the cars. Um, and as I was explaining before, it shows each of the last eight minutes broken up in um, uh, uh, one minute bars with the efficiency for each minute. Now you notice down here it dipped a lot. That's when I got off the turnpike and made a U-turn. So we use a little bit more energy for that minute or two as I was accelerating, getting back out onto the highway. Um, and then it also shows you here 3.6, which is the overall efficiency for this trip. Um, so now we're going up a hill now, it's a little bit lower. Um, it's nice how it breaks up, it helps to teach people how their efficiency, how efficiency works. I think this is a good thing that BMW offers. Other car makers offer something similar too, to give EV owners kind of an idea of how their efficiency works. Uh, let me take what else we have here, driving comfort information. Okay, so this shows you here the potential, how much range you could add. It's showing that I have 55 range uh, miles of range remaining now and that I could add three miles of range if I were to turn the air conditioning off. Um, I, one thing I noticed when I was playing around with it in my um, i3 is if I were to go in uh, lower uh, different driving modes like let's say I went in Eco Pro driving mode uh, the potential uh, to, to save uh, on energy is less because it Eco Pro already derates the energy that goes into the HVA system. So while this I'm in comfort mode now and it shows that I could add three miles of range, if I was driving in Eco Pro mode, it might say that I could add two miles of range. You know, little little bless. It really isn't much of a difference. I think on this, you know, 140, 150 mile drive it might make a difference of two miles, something like that. I mean, I know sometimes that matters when you're trying to squeeze out every mile you can, but for our range tests, we test the cars basically in the, um, uh, the normal driving modes in any event. So we're past 50%, we're on track for about 145 miles. We'll check back in when we're done with the summary. See you then. All finished up. You might notice I'm not standing in front of the car like I usually am when we finish up the range tests. That's because I had to get the car back to BMW. Uh, the i3 isn't a new car, so it's not available in the normal press fleets. So I actually called BMW of North America directly and they loaned me one from their headquarters in Woodcliffe Lake. It's not too far from my house in Chester, New Jersey and I have a good relationship with BMW so they are able to arrange this short term loan for me. So I had to get it back to BMW. Any event, I'm here in my garage in front of, as you can see, charging stations which I review and uh, test out. I'm actually going to be doing comprehensive uh, video review of every charging station on the market so stay tuned for that coming up on this channel uh, back to the i3 so we finished up with 139.5 miles driven with 1% state of charge now if you um, add on that 1% you could add on about a mile and a half because we we're going about 1.4 miles for every battery percentage we're going to round this up to 141 miles and call it at that now if you do the math uh, it works out because we finished up with a consumption rate of 3.6 uh, miles per kilowatt hour for our European friends that's about 17.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers so if you multiply the 3.6 times the usable capacity of the new i3 which is about 39.2 kilowatt hours you end up with 
141, 142 miles, somewhere around there. So it adds up. I was hoping to do a little bit better. When, we, when I started out the video, I said I, was think, I expected us to get about 145, maybe even 150 miles. Uh, but I thought we were going to average like 3.7, maybe a little higher miles per kilowatt hour, uh, and instead finished up with 3.6. Uh, my time in, in my i3, although I never did a proper range test like this, I thought I averaged around 3.7 or so when I was driving at 70 miles an hour. But until you go out and do it and drive, you know, for, for three hours at a constant speed, uh, you know, you, my, my recollection might not be 100% accurate. Uh, it is important to note that we had an i3S, which is more powerful and has wider tires than the regular i3s. So I think if we didn't have an i3S, if it was just a, a regular BEV i3, we would have probably gone a little bit further, maybe four or five, six miles further. In any event, the i3S finished up with 141 miles of range at a constant 70 miles an hour. Um, stay tuned. We got another video coming up in a couple days. Uh, if you like what we're doing here, don't forget, click the subscribe button below and we'll see you out on the road next time.